Okay, uh, the third case which we talk or we haven't really talked about yet is when a we're gonna have infinite points of intersection. So essentially, the line is gonna be on that plane. They've given us an equation of a plane, Cartesian form, and they've given us our line. We have our uh, direction vector and a point on the line. Again, because this is represented with x, y, z, what do we want to do to the vector form of this line? Parametric. We want to put it into parametric form. So that's going to give us x is equal to 3 plus 14s, y is equal to negative 2 minus 5s, and z is equal to 1 minus 3s. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to plug them into the Cartesian form of the plane. That's going to give us 3 plus 14s plus negative 2 minus 5s plus 3 times 1 minus 3s minus 4 equals 0. Work this out. Get rid of our brackets. Then we're going to collect our like terms. So our s's we'll start with 14 minus 5 gives us 9s minus 9s gives us 0s 3 minus 2 gives us 1 plus 3 gives us 4 minus 4 gives us 0 again so I have 0s is equal to 0 now this may look similar to what we had before okay but I want you to think about it and this is why I posed the question before in the previous version no number for t can multiply to negative 3. Can I plug in a value for s times 0 that will give me 0? How many can I do? Anything. I can put any number in for s, and when I multiply it by 0, it will equal 0. So in this case, it's proving that we have an infinite number of solutions. Big difference. Though they look very similar at the end, our 0s being equal to 0 gives us an infinite number of solutions, where 0t equal to a number other than 0 gives us absolutely no solutions. Okay, So make sure you're able to recognize the difference when you're doing this algebraically between those two versions.